All right, this is my 2003 F350 uh, six liter diesel. Um, head gaskets went out on it. I can tell because when I was driving it, it had a lot of coolant that was coming out of the the uh, reservoir bottle. You can see it kind of dripping down in there. Uh, it dripped pretty much everywhere. Pretty good, decent quantity. I know it's not the EGR cooler or the oil cooler because on this truck it doesn't have an oil cooler like you find everywhere else. Uh, this one has the actual bulletproof diesel. Um, oil cooler. It's actually located right behind the uh, AC condenser, right before the radiator. Let's see here. I got the bank system. It sucks. Don't buy it. Uh, you're better off getting the SCT so you can turn off the EGR function. Um, this one has the EGR delete in it, and since I've done that, my oil stays uh, cleaner much longer. It's a little shaky. Let me open this hood up. So got the sinister coolant filter on here. Uh, back under here, that portion right there, that is the oil cooler now. It used to be under, you know, the plate where it normally goes. Um, that's been removed. It has the aftermarket kit. Since then, it uh, runs a lot better. No more injector problems with dirty oil uh, through, through the bypass filter. Um, in here where the oil filter used to be is nothing now. It's blocked off. Uh, so yeah, driving home, I obviously lost some coolant. I kind of knew it was going out just because you'd have a bunch of the white stuff around here on top. Uh, the dried coolant. Uh, it splashed everywhere, got down, dripped all over the place. So, I'm going to make an actual full series video um, showing how to remove everything. The whole top half of the engine to get down to taking the heads out, replacing the head gaskets, I'll even throw a video up there when I go to machine the machine the heads, how much we can take off. I don't know what condition they're in. I'll have to go ahead and approach that once I get to that that part. I may have to buy new ones. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so this video will be good if you guys need to know how to take your turbo off. Uh, this will cover that. Uh, replacing the alternator, taking the intake manifold off. Uh, other common things you want to do, replacing injectors, how do they do it, what do you, what tools do you need. I'll break out the GoPro, um, we'll go from there, or I'll set some of the camera up. We'll cover a lot of those, taking the boost tubes off. I'll show you an easier way to take this guy out, so you can re replace that when you need to. Um, another thing too, the filter miner down here, that guy was about 50% uh, restricted. Since I replaced it, it had much more throttle response. It's just back here on the East Coast, you get a lot of the salt from the roads that tends to clog these up quicker than what you'd find in other locations. Uh, let's see, aside from that, when you do the head gaskets, you're going to want to pick up... Well, if this is the updated part, a lot of the EGR coolers and EGR leaks came from this, having a faulty design. Uh, the reason being is these are universal. They fit the, I believe, the entire Ford fleet. They're not very specific to the international engine like this one has. Uh, you can buy a Stant cap. All right, now Stant is a uh, another manufacturer, a little better quality, more specific to this one. They're supposed to blow off at 16 psi. This one actually is a newer one that I bought. The one I previously bought failed and it wasn't really holding pressure to 16 psi. Now why is that important? Well, simply because when you're running high temperatures in the summertime or when it's hot and your truck's getting over 200 degrees, if you look at your coolant bottle, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. let's see if this one says it or not. Uh, anyways, your ratios that you mix up to are going to, um, see here we go, if you can see that, not too well. But anyways, right there it says using a 15 PSI radiator cap. That is what is going to, the, the dilution ratios that you mix it is what's going to qualify for your, your PSI and your boiling point. So depending on what you, your uh, geographical location demands, um, if this isn't holding pressure to 16 PSI and you're using a ratio over there, your coolant's going to boil um, at no pressure. So if this is open like that, your boiling point is going to be much lower than when it's pressurized. When it's pressurized, you won't flash boil it in your EGR cooler if you still have it hooked up. Uh, okay, 
Another thing I noticed too, people having problems when they put the turbo back on, they get a hissing sound, you get a hissing noise, and that's because you have a turbo leak, not from the exhaust port, but from the actual turbo intake over on the back right. What I do is I take a little uh, strap, and I'll go ahead, like a ratchet strap, I'll hook the ratchet strap over here, I'll drape it across over the turbo, and then you're going to want to put it down on the Y pipe area where the two pipes come together drop it in there, ratchet it somewhat tight, you'll hear a popping noise. That's going to actually seat the Y-pipe up against the turbo and give you a good uh, clean seal. That's one of the tricks that you just need to know how to do. And we've got the banjo bolts down there as well. I'm going to replace those. Um, so I'm going to start doing this, draining the fluids. I'm going to drain the fluids. Um, I recommend that you guys do everything in accordance with your rules. I don't want no BS or anything like that. Take your vehicle to an authorized dealer or AC mechanic. Have them depressurize your AC system. They'll do that for free. They won't charge you. It's part of the federal guidelines. Um, so we're going to remove a lot of stuff, really. We're going to take apart the condenser. We're going to take apart the compressor cables and the wires. We'll remove the AC evaporator. We'll get the shroud off of there. I'm going to disconnect the batteries before I start anything. And I'm also going to drain the coolant bottle itself. Get all that out of there. I'm going to recapture the coolant and dispose of it properly. Which, uh, in my state, is down the toilet. Check with yours. Um, and then we'll go from there. I'll break out the other camera and we'll get a good thorough video going on here of step by step what needs to be done. Uh, the driver's side doing the heads with the ARP studs is a little tricky, but we can get it because we do have some working room in there. There is room to get back there and put one of the bolts. What we'll do is we'll use a zip tie for one of the ARP studs and uh, just kind of somewhat shimmy it in there in the back of the, the head just to get it in place onto the, the dowel pins. Passenger side is more difficult as you can see you don't have much working room down in there But once you get the accumulator you get that taken out and squared away We can pull the actual vent housing out as well. That'll give us more wiggle room and playroom um, Once we get those out we should have enough room at least the shroud and the evaporator if we can get that out We'll have much more um, much more wiggle room to work with and then once again just take note of the harnesses but uh, we'll get going need to order a new oil cap too they get chewed up and pitted over time good times it's gonna be a work in progress uh, I'm also have I have a website for my company um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a web page and post some videos on there too just to have them all in one place because um, this is like a 14 hour project if you pull the cab or yank the engine out uh, doing it in the actual body we're assuming somewhere around 20 hours or so so it's going to be a lot of videos um, my website will allow me to upload more than YouTube um, so I'll put them up there more in detail alright so if you want you follow along and do it yourself if you're curious well, let me know